The morality of progressivism has become an annoying hodgepodge of a game called Label Toss. A game where SJWs and bigots must slap a negative label on everything. Biggest ass wins. This has made it increasingly difficult for a commoner to decipher what's woke, what's problematic, what's inoffensive, what simply likes to make edgy jokes. This is especially infuriating for a progressive such as myself, a creature that craves to push the boundaries of what is socially acceptable without pushing too far. It doesn't help that, referring to SJWs and bigots, when you criticize one, you'll be labeled as the other. Which is why I'm gonna roast both of them in the same video, and I'm gonna enjoy doing so. But before I continue, I beg of you to please, dear Jesus, watch the entire video before you form an opinion, cause I'm diving into some hairy shit. Let's start with the SJWs. For the unaware, an SJW social justice warrior, is a human that shares the ideologies of a progressive, that being wanting to change the world for the better, but does or says things that makes the world change for the worse instead. For example, a progressive can be someone that says a thief who's black should be tried equally as a thief who's white, while an SJW would say the black thief shouldn't be sent to jail. That's racist. Basically, an SJW is a dumb or even evil progressive. One thing SJWs like to do is kiss the ass of whom they consider to be minorities, even when it is really, really unnecessary. I still remember watching Joker in theaters. Fantastic memory of mine. But when the character Sophie showed up on screen, I had a gut feeling that someone was going to randomly point out her skin color and voila because joker trades an interesting character who also happens to be one of two female main characters and the single main character of color for a lame oh, reveal. Oh. i was absolutely right Oftentimes, SJWs wouldn't even understand good ways to do the ass kissing, hence not only screwing up the process, but straight up doing the opposite. So please stop needlessly ass kissing for the sake of social justice. It's ironically making us more bigoted. Another problem with SJWs is that they get offended by the dumbest shit. An example of this that comes to my mind, though admittedly there are a ton of bigger and better examples, is the response to the infamous deleted scene from Captain Marvel, where Carol Danvers assaults a guy and steals his bike, in retaliation to him taking down the map she was reading and asking her to smile. Now Buzz Lightyear sucks ass, I do think the guy was slightly rude. But that's it. Danvers' actions was morally reprehensible nevertheless. But old brown table would disagree with me in We're Still Arguing About Captain Marvel? Where he straight up accuses the guy of sexual harassment for telling a woman to smile. An action that, at worst, can be considered a minor insult. And if his problem is taking down the newspaper, then by brown table's form of logic, Danvers herself has sexually harassed Stan Lee. And what's really queer is Brown Table doesn't even like Captain Marvel, so I don't... I have no ill will against you, Brown Table. Admittedly, I think many of your videos are hilariously bad, but I do see potential in you. Your video on Mulan 2020 was unironically decent, and I really liked your Diary for Whippy Kid video. I just think you're a little... misguided on some topics? That's all. Unfortunately, this environment of SJWs being what many called triggered has sucked the fun out of art. I'm not saying art trying to be not hurtful is bad of itself. I'm actually absolutely fine with inoffensive art, as long as it's, you know, actually good. The problem is, since the type of things that trigger SJWs can be so strange, the artists in question are scared shitless of doing what they want, so they make their art inoffensive by making it as painfully mundane as possible. Well, guess what, artists? I find mundane art to be very offensive. So what you gonna do now? And of course, we can say bye-bye to the stuff that are purposely offensive. Fun fact, living creatures oftentimes have six senses of humor. Comedy can help us cope and not be miserable whenever we learn of something fucking depressing. Plus, offensive humor is often used to criticize bad things in a purposely ironic way. It's why many people like to laugh when they hear about Adolf Hitler. He was a clown after all. What I think is the biggest problem with SJWs is that, intentional or not, their stupidity will oftentimes hide the actual problems with this godforsaken planet. People will scream sexism over an air conditioner. 
I think even for some men it must be too cold. When they are not at all batting an eye over the piece of shit Taliban. Disney will say they're righteous because Milan 2020 respects Chinese culture. It doesn't by the way, taken away from the fact that they filmed near a concentration camp and thanks said camp for allowing them to do so. Why the fuck are there concentration camps in China? Why isn't anybody doing anything about it? And finally, since many of the things SCWs do come across as cruel, it makes their enemies look victimized, and thus will make people empathize with said enemies, including a group of enemies that shouldn't necessarily be empathized with, a group of enemies that are the SJW's worst nightmare, and admittedly for a good reason. Uh, yes. The groups of enemies I'm referring to are the actual, legitimate, unironic bigots. Yes, my segment on SJWs are over. Time to rant about the opposite problem. For the unaware, bigot is the broad term for the people that are famous for hating other people over genetic bullshit. A bigot can be a racist, sexist, homophobe, and whatever the fuck hatred towards religion is called. Atheism. As much as I don't like SJWs, I do appreciate their goals of trying to end all bigotry in the world. But unfortunately for them, most real life bigots are not openly bigoted. Most. Fuck you, niggers! These creatures are now one in a thousand. I hate niggers! Nowadays, a bigot would take advantage of the SJW crap and use it to their advantage. For example, a racist could say something racist, and if they're called out for it, they could just say, No, I'm not racist, I'm just fighting against the SJWs. Those bastards are using the suffering of actual SJW fighters to disguise or deny their evil. It's part of the reason why it's so hard for people to criticize SJWs without other people assuming for them to be bigots, even when they really aren't. One person that does this that usually comes to my mind is this dude named No Bullshit, or No BS now because Susan wants to pander to little bitches. Now, I'm not going to go so far and call this dude an evil bigot, but I am willing to go so far to call him a fool, because he's done shit like saying he doesn't believe in censorship. Sure, this could be seen as censorship, and I'm not necessarily for that. Then contradicting himself by praising Alabama for refusing to air an Arthur episode that have a gay wedding in it. Arthur is a show for freaking four-year-olds, and kids even younger watch it as well. So I don't think they need to be educated about gay weddings or any weddings for that matter. That story and this season opening for Arthur, well, it just seems forced and like they're trying to be politically correct. No, that episode isn't woke. The homosexuality isn't even brought up. Calling someone a socialist when later are proven to actually not know what that means. Not only believing the stupid ass news articles that say Joker is meant to make fun of the leftists, but actually praising the film for apparently doing so. The left hates this film because the story and its creators are mocking them greatly and exposing the radicalness and dangerousness of their side immensely too. Claiming a YouTuber named Jay Exy said his videos should be banned. He had an interesting video about me that he privated because of embarrassment where he said, I don't deserve the right to speak, and some of my views are so controversial, I shouldn't have a platform. When Jay literally said the exact opposite. Now, I would like to make it very clear that I do think he should be allowed to say these things. I don't want to take away his freedom of speech or prevent him from having the right to express his beliefs or even hold these beliefs. I think that he should be allowed to do all of that. I will defend his freedom of speech as I hope he would defend mine in turn. Getting mad at another YouTuber for asking him why he allowed a friend to make fun of his wife. That's so why just didn't you like... call him out on the stream when he was insulting your wife and your relationship? Dude, fuck you. <laughs> oh, God, just... And SJW moments in Avengers Infinity War. Just SJW moments in Avengers Infinity War. And that's the shit I'm aware of. If you want to learn more about this guy, watch these videos. Links in the description. And of course, he excuses his behavior by saying he's just fighting SJWs. That's why he is ironically called No Bullshit. The title is trying to convey to the audience that I'm not misguided by SJW propaganda. I'm the real deal. Debates are gay. Yes, Major Bullshit disguises his stupidity with anti-SJW concepts, and he's not the only one I think does this either. Though he is the only one I can think of where his bullshit was so easy to catch, since most bigots are not actually this obvious. In fact, I'm gonna say it right now, there is a slight possibility no bullshit may actually be a troll. Now, all these different terms, SJWs, bigots, woke, problematic, I beg of you not to simply throw these terms everywhere. 
Because, well, yes, there are SJWs and bigots that are just scumbags that seek power and use the social issues to gain it. But they are in the minority, even in their own groups. I have been using the internet since I was eight. So I was here at the beginning when the civil unrest started. And I have been watching woke and problematic videos for a long time. And honestly, most of this shit is just stuff I have mixed feelings about. I never 100% agree nor 100% disagree with them. I just have mixed feelings. What I'm ultimately saying is that both sides of the coin are rotten, but the majority of them are really just people who don't understand how a good society would function. Understandable, as like I said at the beginning of this video, SJWs and bigots are making it really difficult for everyone else to know what's right or wrong. Some people may even unknowingly share some of the more idiotic beliefs of SJWs and bigots, in spite hating both of them. Is James Bond a chauvinistic pig, or are the SJWs little bitch-ass babies? Is Steven Universe woke garbage, or do the bigots have the brain power of a dead turkey? We may never know. For those who wish to be morally righteous people, but can't figure out who's right or wrong on a specific topic, my advice for y'all is to listen to both sides of the argument and then think very hard on the amount of logic to their argument. And one more thing, if you do want to make counter-arguments against SJW and or bigots, do so without being super vicious to them, because as I've said before, most of them are just confused people. As for the SJWs and bigots that really are just selfish scumbags who just want power and use social issues and a means to gain it, well, let's just say that those buffoons are made for each other. Want to see another video that roasts both SJWs and bigots? Because I like to give a shout out to the influence for this video, the 37th episode of Every Frame a Pause, or EFAP number 37, a podcast video where they go over both what could be argued as a woke video and a problematic video, which just so happens to be the earlier mentioned we're still arguing about Captain Marvel from Brown Table and SJW moments in Avengers Infinity War from No Bullshit. Link in the description. Hi, Rags. Sexual harassment. Well, are you white? Yeah, I, I know that this actually will come up. Even though I'm Jewish, I do classify myself as white, yes. So which one are you first? Uh... Oh!